Hello there. What you just read in the lesson was uh, what some of you may consider a kind of an outlandish statement. And that is higher temperatures corresponds to what? Faster moving molecules. And lower temperatures corresponds to slower moving molecules. Higher temperature, faster moving molecules. Lower temperature, slower moving molecules. You say, hey, prove it, professor. Well, um, you know, that's okay. I don't mind that a bit. That's fine. Be skeptical. It's important to be skeptical at times. Uh, maybe more than, uh, you know, maybe fairly often you should be skeptical about things. But here we have kind of a diagram of a picture that you had in the textbook. We talked about it in the uh, last video. And uh, and you can see why, um, why I'm a, you know, a teacher, a science teacher, not an artist or something. But uh, we drop some food coloring in a uh, glass container. Diffusion takes place. After a while, the dye is evenly distributed. Is diffusion occurring in that last picture? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, because the dye is, in, is uh, evenly distributed, diffusion operates on differences in what? Concentration. Now, if what I said was true, that higher temperatures corresponds to faster moving molecules, and lower temperature corresponds to slower moving molecules, would you predict that this would go from A to C more quickly in warm water or cold water? Hmm, so I don't know. Well, hey, this is one that's not, uh, not dangerous. You can try it at home if you want to. You can take two different glass containers, fill them with water, uh, put one in the refrigerator until it gets just real cold, and uh, just before you take it out of the refrigerator, Put the other one uh, in a microwave for a minute and a half or two, and then just quickly put them both on the kitchen counter. Doop, doop, a couple drops of food coloring. Sit back and wait. If Professor Reezy has any idea of what, of what he's talking about, uh, it should go from A to C more quickly. And which one? The hot water. Well, check it out if you want to. But um, and so, well, with this in mind, we can think of a couple kitchen uh, items around our kitchen that are based on this principle. Uh, most of us uh, have a refrigerator. Well, why do we spend? Uh, I'm sure we all have a refrigerator. What am I talking about? Anyway, uh, in the refrigerator, uh, you put stuff. It gets cold. Uh, what did you spend uh, good money on that uh, refrigerator for? It does what to the molecules? It slows them down. So refrigerators, what? It's a molecule slowdown machine. That microwave I just talked about. You stick some food in there. Close the door. Press the button and you hear a buzz and what's happening inside the microwave what's happening to the molecules of the food or whatever they're speeding up so a microwave oven or any oven is a molecule speed up machine whereas the refrigerator is a molecule slow down machine so hmm okay uh, I've got a desk here I'm pounding on it and uh, you know it's a solid and are the uh, molecules of a solid in motion? Hmm. I don't feel anything. You may not feel anything either. I bang it, just feels feels solid. But we can do a little thought experiment. Those are easy. But uh, it's pretty warm in my office right now, and I can't do anything about it. I don't, you know, I don't have control over those those type of things. But let's say I'm at home, and uh, or you're at home. And uh, your home is, uh, it's pretty warm. It's a warm day. You have your thermostat set on 75 degrees. Okay. What's the temperature of your desk? Well, same temperature as everything else, 75 degrees. Except for you, of course. You're a little higher temperature. But the desk is the same as the air temperature, 75 degrees. Now, so you go over the thermostat, press some buttons, set it at 65, and you leave for a few hours and you come back. What's the air temperature in the house? Ooh, it's a little chillier, 65 degrees. But what's the temperature of the desk as well? Won't it be 65 degrees as well? Will you not have cooled the desk off? I think so. <clears throat> and so if you've cooled off the desk, what have you done to its molecules? You have slowed them down. You have slowed them down. And so, how do we think about the movement of molecules? Uh, well, in a, uh, a gas like this air, we possibly think the molecules just bouncy, bouncy, everything, boom, de boom, de boom, de boom, de boom. And this liquid, we think of uh, 
the molecules may be being a lot closer, sliding around past each other and so forth. What about a solid like my desk that you can't see? Well, there's other solids around here. If uh, solid molecules are moving, uh, how do we think about that? I think maybe like this. Uh, a hot solid, the molecules are vibrating in place, but they're vibrating quickly. A cold solid, the molecules are vibrating much more slowly. Hot solid, cold solid, molecules vibrating in place. Well, Professor, uh, okay, can you actually demonstrate that anyway? I think I can. I'm going to go ahead and shut down this video and then uh, open another with a, excuse me, <coughs> a little demonstration. All right, bye-bye.